G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to Mags TV and today we're taking a look at the latest expansion to Battletech, Urban Warfare. Now Urban Warfare is the second major DLC for Battletech which was one of my top games for 2018. The first DLC of course being Flashpoint. Flashpoint added a lot to Battletech in regards to uh, missions and tasks to complete once you've completed the core campaign to give you a reason to continue playing but all of it felt rather shallow in the long run. There needed to be something more in the background. And my greatest hope was that Urban Warfare would bring that. Unfortunately, to cut to the end conclusion before we go over all the details, it kind of didn't. It's a good expansion, don't get me wrong. The new urban environment, as you'll see, is fantastic to play and it's interesting to play and some of the new mechanics are fantastic as well. But, again, I, I wanted to see something expanded in the campaign department. Unfortunately, outside of the urban biomes and a couple of quality of life improvements that come with the free update that comes with this, pretty much everything in Urban Warfare is really focused on the career mode. In fact, one of the units, the Raven, isn't available until you've completed the campaign and essentially in career mode. So, new game difficulty settings. There has been some changes in here and this is part of the free update that comes with Urban Warfare. First things first, randomized starting mechs. This is a fantastic option that's been added for those who enjoy playing the career mode. Now, you're not going to get an Atlas or a 100 ton assault mech out of randomized starting mechs. They are limited to the same classes and weights as the default mech loadout. However, the combination of mechs you receive can be anything out of those classes, which does make the starts a hell of a lot more interesting. Now, the second change that's been done is the new difficulty bar at the bottom. What you have now is all of the settings. So enemy force strength, everything has a difficulty number associated with it. So by activating them, you can actually see exactly what your score multiplier is going to be. The more options you activate that increases your difficulty level, the higher your score multiplier will be. And at exactly the same time, the options that you deactivate or lower will reduce that score multiplier. Now, there is actually a hard limit to this. So if I set MechWarrior progression to slow, we can see we're now on a score multiplier of 1. Now, no rare salvage, we get the exclamation mark, which is modifier maximum exceeded. Once you reach a score multiplier of 1.0, you cannot go any higher. It doesn't matter what options you activate beyond that, you will not get a higher score multiplier. So you can make the game even more difficult if you choose to, but there's no benefit in that particular area. So. As you can see, most of these are quality of life improvements. Uh, they are good, I quite like the fact that they're there, but most of them aren't really game changing. Uh, the randomized starting mechs excluded from that, but really that's only game changing up until the moment that you start recovering your own battle mechs, in which case you're going to change that starting lineup anyway, so it's only going to affect your first couple of missions or maybe your first couple of flashpoints in career mode. Outside of that, everything else, it's just more clarity more than anything else. Now this goes into other areas as well, there's 50 new star systems leading into the more densely populated sections of the inner sphere. There's also some new options on the map so you can see what systems you've actually been to in the past, as well as some filter options that allow you to filter the star map by biome and by the difficulty level of the missions available there. So it's easier to find the type of mission you're looking for rather than having to click through the map until you locate what you need. It's all good stuff, and, well, it's in the free update, so this is the kind of stuff you would expect there. So, now we've gone over that, let's jump over to the expansion itself and check out some of the new stuff that's there. Coordinates received. Okay, so don't adjust your monitors, the distortion effect just then is completely normal whenever the Raven is on the field. But before we get to the Raven, Let's start with the new urban biome. So obviously the key feature of the urban biome is the buildings. Aye, aye. And the map is littered with them, and every single one of them is fully destructible. They all have exactly 100 points of health each. A light mech may need to take a couple of cracks to actually drop a building down, but anything above a good medium and beyond will drop a building in a single salvo, and anything on top of it falls all the way down and takes damage, and in some cases will be instantly destroyed as well. The chances of that happening are significantly higher if you have already done damage, particularly to the legs of the target mech that's on top of a building, 
but regardless of if those legs are damaged or not, it's always worth dropping the buildings because that higher elevation gives far greater firing arcs and mechs at a higher altitude to their target do have a tendency to get more headshots and that's never good news for you. Now other than the buildings, the urban biomes do of course have forests and water areas. The forests are mainly parklands but they do function the same as forests on normal maps so you can still get your coverage bonuses inside of them. The waterways are, well, as you can see, mainly fountains you. that are placed around the map, usually in areas near the parklands, and Don't while they are small, twice. yes, they can be used to cool your mechs down in much the same way as uh, rivers and other bodies of water on the other maps can. Now, map performance. I personally haven't had Spencer's any problems running the urban biome maps on my PC. They act no slower than any of the other maps that I play on, as you can see right here in this footage. That being said, I did notice the loading times coming into an urban biome were a little bit longer. In fact, it feels like the loading times across every loading screen are a little bit longer this expansion. Waiting on you, Commander. And I have been reliably informed that there are other people that are having problems with performance on the urban biome maps. That they are jittery, stuttery, there are frame drops, and general performance is lower on these maps. Now, I have no idea why this is. It could be that I just got lucky. Regardless, this is why I'm not making too much in the way of comments in regards to the performance on these maps, because I didn't have any performance problems, so I don't really have anything to say in that regard. Anyways, moving on from the map itself, although a little bit of a sidestep, we have a new mechanic called Stray Shot. Now, don't worry, I will be getting to the mechs very soon, I'm going to save them for last. But the Stray Shot yep, mechanic man. is very important for how battles on the city map will actually work out. Now, previously in Battletech, whenever you performed an attack, you either hit the target or you missed the target. And that was pretty much the end of it. However, the new Stray Shot mechanic means that any shots that fail to hit a target will then have a second roll to see if they hit anything nearby orders, to the target. This can include other mechs, this can include buildings, and as I mentioned before, the buildings on the urban biome maps only have 100 points of health each. It's very easy once you start getting into the larger mechs to have just a stray shot here and a stray shot there go off, and suddenly find yourself bringing down whole city blocks without actually deliberately targeting any buildings. This also has up, some Commander? ramifications in some of the missions that you can get. For example, if your Lance is out running an escort mission, protecting a convoy to its objective, and an enemy mech targets one of your mechs that happens to be close to that convoy, it's entirely possible that the missed shots that failed to hit your mech could hit one of the vehicles in the convoy, destroying it. Likewise, having your mech parked too close to an ammunition supply or some other kind of explosive building could cause a detonation that could wind up destroying your mech or even having your mechs grouped too close together. If you have your lance very tightly grouped up in a formation in order to concentrate firepower, which isn't actually a bad tactic a lot of the time, Orders. if the enemy mechs just target the mech to the centralmost point of your formation, any shots that miss that mech are likely going to hit all of the mechs surrounding it. So they can essentially single fire one mech until it's destroyed while dumping all of their missed shots into the rest of your lance for free. Okay, so that is the map and the details there done. Next up we have the mechs and the new mech variants. And there is, well, let's start on the mech variants first because we can quickly breeze through those. There's a whole bunch of new variants that are added in this expansion. The most fun ones are the AC-20 and the PPC armed Urbamechs, these small tiny little Firing trash cans target. running around that can essentially one-shot whatever now. they're facing. They have virtually no ammo, their armor is garbage, they're not particularly fast and they have no combat endurance, but they are hilarious to use. So, getting past the variants, we have two new mechs, both Copy of which that. are present in the background footage at the moment. The first is the Javelin. Now the Javelin comes in two variants, one has quad medium lasers, the other has twin SRM6s with a single ton of ammunition. I normally really like my SRMs, but I do not like the SRM version of the Javelin, it just doesn't have enough longevity in combat. The quad medium laser version however is actually very good and has some surprisingly good heat management allowing you to alpha strike with those four medium lasers fairly regularly overall outside of the hottest of environments. And then there is the poster mech for this expansion, the Raven. Now I leave this one to last because there's actually confirmed. quite a bit to say on it. 
The mech itself is actually fantastically good, and that's exactly what's generating all the distortion effect that's running in the background. Copy that. The Raven is a prototype ECM mech, and its primary job is to mess with everybody else's ability to detect your mechs. Order. Whenever I'm moving the Raven around, I'm sure by now you've noticed that there is a blue ring that Waiting follows you, it wherever Commander. it goes. That is the ECM range, or the ECM bubble, that the Raven is generating. Any mechs that are inside of this and can stay inside of this without firing their weapons, just moving around, are near Waiting invisible to enemy sensors and cannot be targeted by any indirect Move fire. Around. On top of this, if the mechs inside of the field don't do anything to reveal themselves, the only way the enemy can detect them Take is by getting shot. one of their own units inside of the Raven's ECM field. Which of course means getting into point-blank range Confirmed. with mechs that could be carrying heavy autocannons. It's a remarkable little mech with some remarkable capabilities. Unfortunately, I will never be fielding it in any of my Order campaign saves, because... Well, to get access to the Raven, you have to complete a flashpoint for it. Now, you don't get access to flashpoints until after you've completed the campaign in campaign mode, at which time you already have four Lost Tech equipped assault mechs, and you don't really need something like the Raven anymore. Now, in the career game mode, however, yes, as soon as you've got access to a lance that's good enough to complete the flashpoint, you should complete the flashpoint to get access to the Raven. Which is great up until you start reaching the point where you're getting access to some of the good heavy mechs. And you have to start weighing the question, is it worth having the ECM mech Commander? that allows your three heavies to be invisible, essentially, on the battlefield? Or would it be better to have Roger four that. heavies? At the very least, the Raven does get you to ask this question, but Roger I'm still down, not Commander. convinced at this point that the answer is ever going to be take the Raven. The game is still very much focused around the idea of once you get access to heavy mechs, you should probably be using them. So, it's a fun little toy, but it's not a toy that is quite as Commander. useful as it may first appear, simply because of what it is. And that's actually a really good summary for the entire expansion pack, to be perfectly honest. I'm a massive fan of this game. I'm a massive fan of this universe. I've been waiting for Battletech to come back to the forefront for nearly a decade. Confirm. I love the turn-based strategy elements, I love the styling, and this was, as I said at the start, one of my best games, or my top games, for 2018. I, I did over 100 hours in this the first week that I got it. But I don't think I can recommend this expansion pack. This All is weapons. 20 bucks US, almost $30 Australian, to buy this expansion pack. And I'm honestly Critical not hit. sure there's enough here. I mean, the two mechs you get, the Raven you'll probably use a little bit longer because it is rather unique, but the Javelin you're going to replace by the time you get access to common 50 ton mechs. So it's only going to be an early game thing, if anything beyond that. And that's assuming you like one of the two variants that are available for it or can do something with those variant loadouts. The urban maps are fantastic to play on, but they are just a map. There are some new events, there's a couple of new flashpoints, but they're variations on flashpoints that have already yep. existed. There's a couple of new mission types that can pop up Location and some new secondary confirmed. objectives which are interesting, but these are the kind of things that I would expect in a free update for a game that has ongoing development. Where's the expansions to the campaign mode? The base campaign in the Battletech timeline starts in 3025, the fourth succession war. The final succession war before the invasion of the clans starts in 3028. It shouldn't be complex to work Enemy out eliminate. what you should be adding in regards to single player story and expanding in that particular area, especially since you're already making adjustments to the star map that added 50 new star systems in Location higher populated confirmed. areas heading in towards the inner sphere. Systems that most certainly would have been affected by the fourth secession war. Now, maybe Hairbrain Scheme's long-term plan is to add this campaign. Maybe that is exactly where they're going. In which case, I do thoroughly recommend everybody Waiting picks up orders. Urban Warfare when it's on discount and that DLC that expands the single-player storyline has actually been released. Until then, unless you're an avid fan of Battletech like I am, one that really loves the game and can whack down a lot of hours into it, 
I'd honestly say pick up the base game and probably Flashpoint on discount. That'll give you most of the content that's available right now and just enjoy from there. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching. As always, check the video description down below for links to all of my social media, my Twitch where I stream Battletech semi-regularly and my discord if you'd like to come and chat with me in person you also find Internal links to my damage. teespring store down there where i am making some cool merch that i hope Orders. everybody enjoys and as always remember to click that like button if you did share and subscribe if you would like to see more and until next time take care